and welcome back everyone and today I will be starting the player previews and profiles for every single competitor that's going to be on the challenge season 36 double agents. Now for each part I will be talking about five competitors and giving pertinent information about each either about their challenge career or if they're rookies looking into their experiences on their original shows in an attempt for us to understand each person how they could fare in the upcoming season and their abilities a bit more as we draw closer to the premiere of The Challenge Double Agents in December. So I will be going in alphabetical order. So without further ado, let's start with Amber from Big Brother 16 on paper. Amber won one HOH competition, which is a head of household competition, and two battle of the block competitions. What the paper doesn't show you is that in every HOH competition that she was eligible to play in, she was always close to winning. For some examples, in week one, she was one of the last two people left in the competition and she threw the competition to keep the target off her back. And in week four, she had to work with Zach in the Devil Eggs competition and lost to Frankie and Cody by only one egg, showing she can work well with a partner, which is good because in Double Agents, people are gonna be partnered up and you have to be able to work well with somebody else that you have no idea who they are. Also, when she did win Head of Household, she put up Nicole F, which shows she has a good judge of character. As I mentioned, she won two Battle of the Block competitions, one of which was Night Moves, a chess style competition, and she pretty much won it single-handedly when her partner trapped herself early on and she had to face off against 2v1. In her intro to Big Brother 16, Amber is seen rock climbing and she tells us that she is outdoorsy and loves to be active. And seeing her Instagram posts, they show she works out a lot and is athletic. And seeing her stand side by side next to her old Big Brother 16 cast shows she's taller than the majority of the women and some of the men, which will bode well for her in daily challenges and eliminations. The only thing that worries me about Amber is puzzles because... I hate puzzles. Now it's true that Amber was evicted fifth in her Big Brother 16 season but it really wasn't anything to do with her. It wasn't because of her social game, because she actually had a good social game. It wasn't because of her uh, physical abilities, because she was actually a really strong physical competitor. It was because of a delusional cowboy who thought eating a pickle should have been enough for her to just throw herself at him. And when a quote unquote love triangle formed and caused rifts in the bomb squad slash detonator alliance, Frankie decided to backdoor her to keep the numbers and the peace on his side. Now rewatching Amber on Big Brother 16, makes me quite excited to see what she can do on this season of the challenge, especially with other people that have played on Big Brother as well. Maybe she can get in good with them and also use their connections to help get far into the season. I think she looks to be a strong physical competitor and I think that she's gonna be one to keep your eye on for this season of the challenge. But let's move on to another rookie named Amber and that is Amber from Are You The One season eight. Eight. Now, before we get into Amber as the person, let's take a look at Are You The One performance-wise in the challenge. Out of all the people that have come from Are You The One, there have only been nine final appearances among them and one challenge win, and that was Hunter, which he netted a big old goose egg at the end of Final Reckoning. Somebody give up Tennis shoes. Contestants from Are You The One is one of the trickiest to predict, mainly because of how Are You The One is set up. It's mainly a reality dating show that focuses on being social rather than actual competitions. Now, don't get me wrong, there are competitions on Are You The One. Again, it's just hard to gauge when taking a look into Amber's experiences on Are You The One. She was voted most desirable and played the game mainly with her heart, but in the final matching ceremony, she went with her head and helped the cast win the grand prize money. Amber can play a great social game. The whole house loved her, but in the challenge, your social game only gets you so far, especially if you're a rookie. It's gonna come down to actually winning some competitions and making some moves to help get you farther into the game. Now, I feel Amber could be underestimated because of her size and coming from Are You The One, but I actually think Amber could do well in this season. But as I said, it's, it's gonna be tough to gauge 
and pinpoint exactly how well she can do in this season with the limited resources and um, information that we have on her and her abilities like swimming, like puzzles. Now, let's move into some of the veterans that are coming into this challenge season and we're gonna start off none other than with Anissa whose original show was The Real World Chicago. This is her 14th challenge season. In her challenge career, she has seen two finals technically, which was season 11, The Gauntlet 2, and The Duel 2, which was season 17. So it's been a while since she's seen a challenge finals. And I do say technically because in The Duel season 13, she did get third place. And in any other season of the challenge, in any other solo season, if you're in the third place, you're technically in the finals, but she went head to head with Svetlana and lost. So they don't count it as technically being in the finals, which I, I, I don't know, it's a little gray line a little bit, but let's move on to the elimination record. She has seen a total of 19 eliminations, second only behind Wes Bergman. When taking a look at her wins and losses, she is nine and 10. In Total Madness, the most recent season, she went one for one, winning against Jenna in the middle of the season and then losing to Bailey close to the end in episode 14. But before her elimination win against Jenna in Total Madness, Anissa had lost four straight eliminations dating back from Dirty 30, Bloodlines, and Free Agents. Actually, from Free Agents episode eight when she lost to Laurel in the Oppenheimer. Now I say all that, but she did have a redemption game win against Marie and Nicole in Dirty 30 to get back in the game. But when looking strictly at eliminations, she has been writing a four game elimination losing streak before the Total Madness win against Jenna. Now let's take a look at Anissa's performances in seasons where she was partnered up with somebody else in Rivals, she went home in episode one with her partner Robin, losing the first elimination in episode one. Then in Battle of the Exes, she lost in episode six with her partner Rachel. Then in Rivals 2, she lost in episode 11, where she and her partner DM finished in fourth place. And then in Bloodlines, she also lost in episode 11, finishing fourth place with her cousin. Now, Anissa has always done better in physical elimination. She is a seasoned vet. Her challenge roots date back all the way to season six, Battle of the Sexes, and that comes with experience. But can she translate her experience to earn her first challenge win? You never know what could happen, who she's gonna be partnered up with, and if she can use her seniority to get the matchups that she wants, that she needs to make it far into the game, to make it to the finals. I just don't know. Uh, last season, she was getting thrown into an elimination because people were worried about being partnered up with her. What could happen this season? We're gonna have to wait and see. Let's move on to the next person we're gonna be talking about, and that is Ashley Mitchell. Her original show is The Real World Explosion, and this is her eighth challenge season. She's a three-time finalist, two-time challenge winner, winning Invasion of the Champions and Final Reckoning. Taking a look at her elimination record, she's seen a total of six eliminations. She's broken even, winning and losing three each. From Final Reckoning to Total Madness, her elimination record is two and two. Some notable wins to look into coming into this season. She won against Nicole Z in Invasion of the Champions, and she won against Nani in War of the Worlds 2 in the Super Elimination. And both of those women are back for the challenge season 36 double agents. Now, in the same breath, she lost to Lolo Jones in Champs vs. Pros back in 2017 in an elimination that was kind of a mix of the spool elimination from the ruins and the not so fast type of elimination. Ashley has proven time and time again that she is a tough competitor with her endurance, her physicality, her puzzle solving abilities, and social game. She also has this pattern where she makes it far in seasons coming off seasons where she left early. This dates back to Invasion of the Champions where she won and then in the next season she came back for Dirty 30, she left in episode one. Then she skipped over Vendettas and came back for Final Reckoning, which in that season she won and took the whole million dollars for herself. Then in season 33, War of the Worlds, she was eliminated in episode two to then come back for War of the Worlds season 34 to make it to the finals. And then last season in Total Madness, she was eliminated in episode four in the Codebreaker elimination. 
if this pattern continues, we could be seeing Ashley go far into this season, and it bodes well for her that the man leading the charge in getting her voted in early into the elimination last season, Johnny Bananas, is not on this season. However, Ashley is coming into the season as one of only four champions, and I should add the only woman challenge champion on this cast list. And with that factor, that could put a huge target on her back. Now, the final competitor that we are speaking about in this part one of the player previews and profiles is Chris C.T. Tamborello, whose original season was the real world Paris. This is his 18th challenge season with no bananas on this cast. CT is coming in as the most seasoned vet on this challenge cast list. He is an eight-time finalist, a three-time challenge champ. He won Rivals 2, he won Invasion of the Champions, and he won War of the Worlds 2. He's actually coming in as the most recent winner of the challenge. Now, taking a look at his elimination record, even though he's been on 17 prior seasons, he's only seen 10 eliminations. He's won five and lost five. He hasn't won an elimination since Invasion of the Champions where he went up against Durrell in the not so fast elimination and won, which Durrell is also on this challenge season. Happy to have him back. Again, just like I said about Anissa, CT has a redemption challenge win in Dirty 30, but in total madness, he lost to Jay in episode three in the Take Shelter elimination. He also lost in episode four in War of the Worlds where he lost to JP and Kyle in the ring tossed elimination. He didn't see eliminations in War of the Worlds 2, Final Reckoning, or Dirty 30. CT has been able to use his social game and the quote unquote pops mentality to help be the father figure of the house recently. He is still an intimidating figure from his height, size, and reputation, but his main struggle in recent seasons has been not being in as good of shape as he was back in Free Agents or Rivals 2. He's a father, and to be fair, he's won more challenges with the dad board than he did without it, and that's counting two champs versus stars wins. However, looking at the cast photos, and people have pointed out, CT is looking quite a bit trimmer. Maybe losing to Jay in Total Madness was the fire that needed to be had underneath his feet to get him to train harder than he's ever done before. Now, if he comes in in much better shape, he can win some daily challenges and use that Pops mentality and social game to make it far into the season. I think we are all gonna have to keep our eyes on CT and what he can do coming into the challenge double agents. But that is it for part one of these player previews and profiles. What do you think about these five competitors? Let me know that in the comment section below. Who are you rooting for out of these five, if you're rooting for any of them, or if you're rooting against them, let me know why down in the comment section below. I'm gonna have these coming out every Wednesday and Saturday leading up to the premiere of The Challenge, season 36, Double Agents, which is coming out on December 9th. And also, these are all gonna be out by December 7th, which is gonna be that declassified episode, which is coming out on December 7th. But thank you so much for watching. Again, while you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button. I'll be back really, really soon with more challenge content, more content in general. But until then, peace.